Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Prince Automation Destination. So today we are going to talk about solid principles, which is a trending topic in the market and widely being asked during the interviews. So let us try to understand what is the need of solid principles. So while writing the code, we are supposed to write the code in the cleaner form, meaning if someone come to our framework, a new user come to our framework, they should be able to read the framework and they should be able to understand the framework and the framework should be maintainable as well. So to achieve these attributes, we need to follow some clean code principles. So solid is one of such clean code principle and solid stands for a single responsibility principle, open close principle, L stands for Liskov substitution principle, I stands for interface segregation principle and D stands for dependency inversion principle. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about each one of them from test automation perspective. The example that I'll be giving you from the test automation perspective. So single responsibility principle. What does it say? It says like a single class should have a single responsibility. Meaning, if we are writing a class, that particular class should have a single responsibility. Let us take an example of a page object model. So I have created very basic page object model wherein I have considered a login page, a very basic page and then we have dashboard page. So in login page, if you have worked in automation framework, what do we do? We write uh, the elements related to that page. So in this case what I have written I have written username element then the password element and the login button So on the login page these are the three fields that would be generally available on every login page Right, so on this login page what we are doing we are writing the element related to login page then after we are writing the actions related to that login page meaning on the login page but actions we can perform we can enter the credentials that is username and password and secondly we can click on login button right likewise when we go to dashboard page so we what we used to write in page object model for dashboard we will be writing the elements web elements i mean uh, related to dashboard page and then we will be writing the actions related to dashboard page wherein we'll be performing some validation related to dashboard after logging into the application right so if you take an, if you take a look on these pages these are these particular pages for example login page it has a single responsibility what does the single responsibility here means single responsibility means this login page is dealing with the login elements and it is performing actions related to login page only so this is what the single responsibility principal states uh, like uh, every class should have a single responsibility principle so for example now let us say if I copy this particular element and I put it in the login page and then what it what will happen it will become the violation of single responsibility principle because I am I have mixed up dashboard as well as login page web elements so as per the single responsibility principle, we are supposed to um, write the class in such a way that the class should have a single responsibility. So page object model is the best example for single responsibility principle. So the next principle that we are going to discuss about is open clause principle that is OCP. It is generally known as OCP and single responsibility principle is known as SRP as well. So let us talk about open clause principle. So what does open clause principle states? It says like we are open for extension clause for modification meaning if there is a functionality that is working fine for the code and we want some modification then we should not modify the same function instead what should we do we should extend that particular class and we should modify the functionality meaning we need to override the function so that we don't impact the existing functionality so let us try to understand it from the example side so here you see we were discussing on the page object model right so i have written one base page 
which is a common page we can say which is having some common functionality so inputting a data is a common function in uh, like automation inputting in one field and then clicking on a button is also one operation and clicking on submit button this is applicable mainly for the login related pages wherein we need to click on login button and we can do so using element.submit so let us focus on these two operations input data and click on button so this is the base page now let me go to login page so this login page is extending the base page means this login page is inheriting the base page when it is inheriting the base page meaning it has access to the methods of this particular class right so uh, let me go to login first so what we are doing if you remember we were uh, we have written this particular method and the username and password so we are not directly using the element and using the send case to send the username instead what we are doing we have written one common method in the base page because this is a common function across all the pages so I have tried to reuse it so using input data what we are providing we are providing the element and on that element what we want to enter we are passing the data as well right now the second thing is similarly we are entering the password as well so this is how we are achieving the reusability next step is login to the application so one way is login button dot click we would have written but clicking on bot button is a um, like generic or a common operation so i have kept it under base page class right so similar to the previous input data i did the same thing and here i am doing the uh, this uh, right base page right now for example today there are two pages but tomorrow for example the application grows and application grows and the automation script also likewise grows right now instead of two pages let us say we have 20 pages and out of 20 pages one page let us say dashboard page is unable to perform the click operation right or let us say login page is unable to perform the click operation meaning when we are using this click on button operation it is unable to do so meaning this base page class right the click on button it is unable to perform this why because let us think like on login page sometimes it is needed to be refreshed once again and this is the non issue so in that case what we will do we will extend the base page in the login right so base page is a parent class and login page is the class related to login right so what we will do instead of modifying the functionality here because if we will modify the functionality here what will happen it will impact for the rest of all the pages where it is already working so what we will do we will extend this particular class right and then we will override this method right so this is what the open clause principle says like open for extension meaning we have extended the class but close for modification means we are not supposed to modify this particular method because if you will modify this it will have impact on the rest of the code as well which is in working state right so we will extend it and then after we will override this particular method click on button so if you notice what we are doing before clicking on the element we are simply refreshing the page right so this is how we can modify the behavior and this is how we can utilize the open clause principle next one is list of substitution principle this principle is one of the complex principle i'll try to uh, like uh, make it easy for you so what does it says it says when doing the inheritance when we are trying to inherit one class we should be concerned about list of substitution principle meaning what does it says if any class which is inheriting a parent class it should be substitutable of parent meaning if parent has some methods then child should be able to use those methods so let us try to understand here suppose class b extends class a um, so class a is the parent and class b is the child we should be able to pass an object of class b to the method which accept object of class a without breaking the behavior so the class the, the object of class a and class b should be interchangeable let us try to understand from the example right what does it want to say so now you see that we have this base page class wherein we have written these common functions and we have written this click on submit button as well 
and this dashboard page is extending this uh, uh, base page similarly login page is also extending this base page now these methods are common for both the pages or for all the pages because click on button is a normal operation similarly input data is also a normal operation but this submit button will work mainly on the login page because on login page we have a login button and submit is usually used for the login kind of operations right wherein because in login button this submit kind of element is provided and using element.submit we can directly uh, click on login right but what if i try this click on submit button on the dashboard page it won't work right so if i'll try to use it in the dashboard page it won't work why because we won't get any element which is related to submit operation right so on login page only we will have this operation so what does this list of substitution says in this case dashboard page is not substitutable of parent base page right because dashboard page is unable to use all the methods of this parent right so how to achieve or how to make it exactly substitutable what should we do we should comment this meaning what does list of substitution says list of substitution says like we should apply the inheritance only on those cases where all the methods of a particular parent class are getting utilized by the child as well right and we should not narrow down the behavior as well so for example click on button is the functionality here and if i go here in the login button so i should not change the behavior change the behavior mean meaning i'm i'm not changing the behavior only thing i have brought in is i'm just refreshing the page so instead of for example uh, refreshing and clicking arms if i for example change it to send keys and sending something so this is a violation of list of principle we are changing the behavior instead of click we are performing different operation so this is what is list of substitution meaning the child class should be substituted by the parent class okay so now let us try to understand another uh, principle that is interface segregation principle so what does it says it says we should not have one fat interface instead we should break the interfaces per uh, their respons responsibility for the single responsibility as well right so that it is manageable and the classes which are using the interface which are implementing the interface they are not bound to implement all the methods let us try to understand from the example let me go to the driver method right wherein what we have written we have written uh, a common example right so if uh, for example if i go to web driver or remote web driver let us take an example of remote web driver so if i'll go inside this remote web driver you see that we have a separate separate interfaces so web driver is one interface javascript executor is one interface finds by id is one interface find by class is another interface right so they would have like the selenium would have implemented or would have defined all the methods under let us say web driver but they didn't do so why because for example uh, let us say let us take an example of desktop driver right so desktop driver won't have need of javascript executor right so there is so what desktop driver would be doing so desktop driver would implement only web driver they won't implement this javascript executor right so this is the purpose of segregating the interfaces so that we are not or the class is not bound to implement irrelevant methods right because in desktop javascript executor is of no use right so this is what is interface segregation principle next come is dependency inversion principle what does it says it says our classes the classes which we are dealing with should not be dependent on the concrete classes in fact they should be dependent on the interfaces or on the abstract classes meaning the code should be loosely coupled instead of tightly coupled so let us try to understand from this example so in this example what i have done i have simply initialized chrome driver driver equal to new chrome driver so i am initializing the new uh, the chrome driver object I'm, and i am assigning it to the chrome driver object now and i am in this case what i am doing i am launching the source demo.com right for example now i want to execute the test cases in firefox what i will do 
I will change it to Firefox driver, right? And I'll have to make it like Firefox driver as well. And this is new Firefox driver, right? So when I will write like this, I'll have to replace this one as well. So this way, when we are using the concrete class, we will have to make a mod lot of modifications. Right now it is two line of code, but while we'll be uh, writing the actual framework or while we'll be dealing with the real time framework, we will have to make the changes at many places and that will become a headache, right? So to avoid this, we should invert the dependency from the concrete class to the interface or to the abstract class. So let us simplify this. So how to simplify it? Instead of using the Chrome driver class, what we can do, we can simply use WebDriver interface, right? So when we'll provide when WebDriver, we will provide one generic name, right? And here we will write driver.get. So in case now you want to switch to Firefox, we can simply come here and we can replace it with Firefox driver, right? Or in case, for example, you want to use switch case also, that is also easy because you would be using the web driver only, right? So this is how we can remove the dependency from the concrete class to the uh, or this is how we can invert or invert the dependency from the concrete class to the abstract or uh, abstract class or to the interface so this is what is a uh, solid principle is all about this is what i wanted to cover from the test automation perspective hope you like my video i would request you to please like share and subscribe in case of any queries please feel free to reach out to me via comments and in case you require any support please ping me personally as well I'll, i can share you my linkedin profile as well thank you once again for watching